the reason I was invited is uh, we are a company that is working on sustainability. We were, until very recently, a startup. Uh, we were acquired by John Deere about a year ago. And uh, I believe the reason I was invited to, to, uh, to speak here is because we're working on problems of uh, agriculture and sustainability and using technology. And, uh, and uh, we are doing uh, tech for good, is what I believe. So um, using high technology to solve uh, world pressing problems is the title of, uh, of, of the presentation I have for you today. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that I wanted to talk about is in the case of agriculture, which is, uh, which is a primary activity around the world and uh, involve actually quite a bit on, on uh, solving problems uh, such as hunger, such as poverty, such as sustainability, very, very big impact on those. And uh, the way to think about agriculture is as a dynamic system. Agriculture has been changing and will continue to change over the years. Uh, we didn't use, uh, if you think about the scale of human development, we didn't use tractors, for example, for a long time. We didn't use chemicals in agriculture uh, until the 50s. We didn't use fertilizers in a large scale. We didn't use herbicides in large scale, uh, but we now do. Uh, we didn't use biochemicals. We didn't use GMOs until about 20 years ago, but we now do. In the quest of producing more, we've been, uh, we've been uh, innovating quite fast. Uh, the world has been innovating quite fast. And uh, I believe that something that is going to remain a, uh, uh, remain a, a constant is, is this, this uh, a state of change. Agriculture is going to continue to change. And I believe that in particular, the next stage that has already started is using digital technologies in agriculture. And let me tell you a little bit about more of that, because I believe that in using those, we can help uh, a lot of the goals we have around sustainability, around the, 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 uh, the area of producing food in a more sustainable way, in a way that we can continue to do it in years to come. This is how most of agriculture is done in the advanced world. Uh, big machine sprayer sprays this blanket of herbicides over everything. Some of it lands on the weeds, which is designed to kill. Uh, that chemical is designed to kill weeds. Some of it lands on top of the, of the soil where it does not do much. It just gets, uh, um, with the next rain, it gets run off to the, to the stream. And some of it lands in the crops that we end up harvesting. And uh, that there it doesn't do much either because the, gro the crops have been genetically modified to, to resist that, that, that chemical, right? So it's, um, it, this is the way that agriculture is done in the, in the advanced world, the modern world. And uh, we believe that uh, a lot of it is not, it's not very efficient. It's very wasteful on the contrary. We're using a lot of chemicals to cover every, every square inch where only a small percentage of the field is is uh, done by, by the weeds, uh, is occupied by the weeds. I don't know if there's a way of pointing, but uh, that where my mouse is there, that big plant is a weed. These things in rows are crops, so those don't need, don't need the, the herbicide, yet they're receiving it. Uh, the problem with this is several, several fold, uh, aside from sustainability, from, from uh, wasted inputs and, and chemistry getting into, into, our food, into our food chain. A big problem is that nature is also, um, is also uh, not liking, not, not making this technology not sustainable. And uh, a big area is this, what is called the weed resistance. Uh, weeds are now being called super weeds, uh, have been become resistant to the chemicals that we've been using over and over and over again. If you use the same chemical to kill a weed, it just becomes resistant, similar to what is happening with uh, antibiotics and, uh, and resistance to, um, to, I don't know, step throat now, now is a big, big problem because uh, 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 there's a few antibiotics that, uh, that cure it. So it's, um, it's, it just happens. Na nature adapts. Uh, survival is, uh, is very well ingrained in, in nature, and weeds have become resistant to the chemicals we've been using. And in particular, this is a big problem because we're limited to about three chemicals, or exactly three chemicals that we can use that kill the weeds without killing the crops. These are the chemicals that we have, the world has genetic modifications for. Um, it's, one is called Roundup uh, glyphosate, another one is called glyphosinate or Liberty, and the other one is called Dicamba, which is a chemical by, by Monsanto that is the newest one and is probably the most problematic. Um, but the weeds have become resistant to all of them. In fact, here's a map of the United States. By the way, this is a world problem, but uh, here's a map of the United States where, I have, where we, there's pretty good data that shows how many plant species, or weed species rather, are resistant to these three chemicals that we can use. 
And, uh, and you can see it evolving over time on how many, how many wheat species are resistant to this. To this. It's an exponential problem, as, uh, as we were talking about in, in SDGs, right? It's a complex problem. It's a, an exponential problem. Every plant that, uh, that is not killed by the herbicide produces somewhere between 100 and 100,000 seeds that are, that are then all resistant to this herbicide so they don't die. With that, when they use the same the same method, so sustainability is also is about being able to do the same thing you've been doing uh, in the future. And uh, clearly, when you have resistance and the weeds not dying, it's not possible. And the problem is not that the the herbicides uh, don't exist that kill those weeds; is that the three that are that there's genetic modifications uh, don't uh, don't kill those weeds. So, gee, now uh, the the best solution that, uh, that, that uh, the world has is, well, let's create a fourth genetic modification and, uh, and pair it with a fourth chemical that we can use. And uh, now on top of using the three chemicals that we're using, let's use this fourth chemical. So, so it's more chemicals and more, more waste, and that's a problem. That's not uh, the best way of approaching it. Uh, in contrast, what we've been doing at, at Blue River Technology for the last uh, seven years uh, is we've been de developing uh, that machine, that uh, white piece of machine that you see being pulled by a, by a tractor. The machine uh, oops, looks, at the, looks at the plants as it goes and recognizes which ones are weeds and which ones are, are crops. And it sprays only the weeds and not the crops and not the bare ground. So you can see that little shower. I don't know if it showed well there, uh, but it... it, it it showers the weeds as it detects them, and it, it does it. This is a very small, a very slow, uh, slow video. The the machines go at around eight miles per hour now, and soon to be our goal is to go at uh, 15 miles per hour, and we hope to do that by next year. So uh, instead of spraying everything, we spray only only the weeds and only where they are needed. Uh, we do that by using machine learning, uh, computer vision techniques. We take an image of the field that you can see there in your right. Uh, we then use uh, artificial intelligence to detect which ones are crops, which ones are weeds. This is uh, very similar to technologies that are being used, for example, on Facebook. When you put up a picture of your friend, they can say, hey, this is uh, Fred, this is uh, Jay King, this is, uh, so, you, 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 and they can do it very fast uh, using the same technologies and computing that is in the machine that you saw, that white machine, we're able to detect the the crops detect the weeds and detect when there's nothing. And we, you can see there in the left, we spray only the weeds. Uh, you can see that a lot of the area is actually not sprayed, which is actually precisely the point. You only spray the weeds. Uh, in doing so, we reduce the chemical use by about 90%, herbicide use by, by about 90%, just to give you a little bit of a sense. Uh, I was talking with a farmer about, about 5,000 acres in corn. He was saying that uh, they, they spray about 250 thousand dollars worth of chemicals every year, of herbicides every year. And uh, what, we, what I was telling him is, gee, yeah, we can reduce that by a factor of 10. So that's a very big payoff if uh, we do it. So, so sustainability doesn't need to mean that, uh, that uh, it's not contrary to profitability or to savings or to self-paying for this investment. Uh, we also can reduce uh, the cost of, uh, potentially the cost of seed by, by providing alternatives to GMOs. If we're not spraying the crop, we don't need the GMO, the modification, the genetic, uh, genetic modification that allows the weeds to be resistant to, to the weeds. And as I was saying, more importantly, we are allowed to use a lot more chemistry, some of which is much more sustainable than the chemistry we're using, and, uh, and use this chemical alternatives so that we can, uh, we can fight, uh, we can fight uh, uh, weed resistance by, by, by changing the chemicals. There's about 100 different herbicides that are, that are active in the world, that are used in the world. Uh, but only about three are, get used in, 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 in modern agriculture. And since uh, the reason that, uh, that we only use three is because if you spray any of the other hundred, you kill the wheat and the crop, right? Uh, but in, in, with you, if you use this method, you only are spraying the wheat so, so the crop is safe. So you don't, you're not limited to the, to the three chemicals that are overused in agriculture. So that's uh, very, very powerful. So yeah, reduce the amount of chemicals. Re potentially have uh, alternatives to seeds that are less expensive and, uh, and, and a more sustainable way of combating weeds. Uh, the, this is going a little bit about uh, to what we do. We, uh, we, we uh, create what is called smart machines. Uh, and they are machines that, in general, sense, decide using artificial intelligence 
act in a very local way and then verify what they did. And we are very good at, um, at, at bringing technologies like computer vision, machine learning, deep learning, robotics. These are technologies that are pretty cutting edge technologies that uh, the S Silicon, Silicon Valley is very good at. And uh, we put them to work towards uh, sustainability, towards good goals. So I, I am a firm believer that uh, that we are doing uh, that we are doing uh, technology for good. It's not just technology for technology's sake. Uh, I, I tell uh, new new recruits that are considering joining Blue River is uh, hey, you can use this machine learning AI to create spam filters or to uh, I don't know sell more ads or or whatever whatever uh, that I don't know big tech is doing uh, these days. Or you can use it to to solve a real 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 problem that the world has that needs uh, an urgent solution. And uh, and I think it's a, a very appealing a, a very appealing um, um, uh, proposition for, for, for especially for, for uh, young, young people. A lot of the people that are working on, on machine learning, computer vision, these are pretty new techniques and a lot of them, a lot of them are very young, millennials, very, very, very big on, and, and very connected to sustainability and they want to have an impact and uh, that argument works really well. And this is maybe just to finish, this is uh, what the company looks like, um, biased towards uh, Towards a young young age, as I was saying, a lot a lot of very very smart people, and um, and uh, we were as I was saying uh, we had pretty good success, and as a result of that we were acquired by by John Deere about a year ago. So very happy to be uh, to be now part of John Deere and be able to uh, through John Deere through their machinery uh, scale up the impact that we can have. So so if you can think about the impact that a startup can have with limited distribution, with limited manufacturing capabilities versus versus working with uh, being part of a number one uh, uh, manufacturer of, a, of agricultural equipment, now it's uh, much bigger. So that's it, and that's uh, a little bit on, uh, on Blue River. Uh, thank you for having me here.